so uh, I think we can begin. Uh, as people join, they can uh, definitely uh, link up. Yeah. So uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is uh, Sukul Behel. I head robotics and automation at Nido uh, over a variety of functions. Uh, today, we are going to be talking about what flexible automation is, how it can benefit you, and specifically how AGVs and AMRs can be implemented. Uh, before starting, I hope all of you are doing well and keeping safe with your families. Um, I, I hope uh, that you're able to use your time well and work from home properly. Um, the meeting is, this webinar is going to be for one hour. Uh, it might extend for an additional five or 10 minutes. So I'll request you to allow that and bear with it. So um, to, to start off, I think it's, it's very important for all of us to understand where automation comes from. So the word automation itself is a very ancient word. It was uh, created or you can say first spoken about by the Greeks. Uh, they created this word called automaton, which means acting of one's own will. It was first used by a Greek philosopher called Homer in the 1790s to describe automatic door opening or automatic movement of wheel tripods. At the same time, a lot of philosophers and inventors started creating something called automatas. Automatas were essentially machines that were modeled on human beings or animals. So this has always been the inspiration for human beings to uh, start with automation and also to develop technology. Even today, if you see the greatest technologies all come inspired from nature. If we look at the specific definition, automation can be defined as the technology by which a process is performed with minimal or no human assistance. As we move forward, automation is getting to almost a complete non-human scenario. Uh, the idea is that we make it more efficient, more safe, and supplement human beings. Uh, the idea is not to replace them. If you look at industrial automation per se, it is the use of control systems, specifically such as computers or robots, and technologies for handling different processes to replace a human being. Now, earlier I said that you are supplementing human beings, not replacing them. The idea is that you're creating a system in which human beings are, for now, taking the decisions, but the system is acting on a more and more autonomous level that is self-intelligent, capable to take decisions on its own. Therefore, it started off with mechanization using mechanical systems. Eventually, as I take you through industry 4.0, industry 3.0, I will make you understand how automation has proceeded from the, the simple mechanical systems to more advanced processes and control systems. So if you look, Henry Ford was one of the first people to actually think about automation. He created the assembly line, which was the birth of mechanized automation in the early 1900s. On the right, you will see the Model T, which was one of the most famous cars, which was built on a moving assembly line. At the time, this was not thought of. Today, it is almost common and considered an obvious fact. So all of you must have heard of the term industry 4.0 IoT. Now, do you really need to implement this? Is it practical to implement this? The fact is yes, but in a phase wise manner. So we started off with industry 1.0 in the early 1700s. It started off with oil production, where you saw these huge 
mills and levers essentially for pulling oil out of the ground for harvesting them and correspondingly it went on to clothing and steam power industry 2.0 which was in the 1870s and which henry ford then pioneered was mass production using an assembly line and with nikola tesla and a few other inventors we started getting electrical energy correspondingly in 1970s as we started in uh, inventing computers we started using vacuum tubes we started using different sources of technologies to mimic transistors we came on to industry 3.0 where we could build control systems with electronics this is how the modern interpretation of automation came into be moving forward all of us are living in a world which is getting more and more connected therefore why industry 4.0 is the thing that is trending or everyone wants to move towards it is because of data you must have heard of this statement that connectivity and data are the new oil which is true because if you cannot manage data if you cannot use data properly whether it be in manufacturing or your any sort of production operation you are unable to leverage and get insights into that particular operation it is very difficult otherwise to improve and analyze therefore industry 4.0 essentially focuses on data and connectivity if you look at the schematic on the right these are some of the things that come together to form industry 4.0 autonomous robots which we will be talking about in detail today simulation technologies iot cloud computing additive manufacturing which is again set to change how manufacturing is thought of augmented reality and big data these are all essentially focusing on connectivity flexibility scalability and data these four parameters are what are driving automation towards a more connected age so industry 4.0 while the scope is very broad i will just be talking about whether it is applicable of for logistics or it is not for production a lot of these scenarios for conventional manufacturing is quite clear but for logistics how exactly would you be able to implement industry 4.0 technologies is a bit more challenging and complex so let us start off with internet of things now internet of things essentially is just connecting every possible device you may have heard of this term towards smart homes towards aspects of your everyday life even your phone is an internet of thing device essentially so how does this add value it adds value across warehousing last mile delivery freight transportation now what it is doing there is it is enabling transparency along your operation you have the linkages between each of them you have real time data and you can analyze and track data and parameters as you want a unique application of this is environment sensing for example today there is a lot of transportation especially in europe where fruits and vegetables are not locally grown in our country blessed with a diverse environment we have a lot of regions catering to different food different logistics towards that but there it often means that fruits and vegetables have to be transported in a day from country to country therefore intelligent sensors tracking enable you to track the freshness all the time applications like these are what essentially create an impact we look at machine learning this is another very touted term these days which is used by a lot of people in a lot of senses essentially all 
we can use it to start off with is for optimization. How do you optimize algorithms for shippers to select the best carrier, the best route, the best quality control? Say a truck has to go from Delhi to Bivari. Now, there are multiple routes based on the real-time traffic, the location tracking, the aspects towards career logistics. Taking all this into account, a machine learning algorithm can actually deliver it intelligently for you. Natural language processing is another very exciting technology that promises to recognize speech and convert it to text and also be able to analyze and understand human language. Therefore, pick by voice becomes possible. A lot of other technologies which were previously not possible required a process of pushing a button can now be automated. Similarly, optimization of storage, waste reduction can be done. Moving on, we have predictive forecasting, which links up to machine learning. This can predict forecasts. It can help you deal with seasonal demands. It can reduce your delivery times. Therefore, it allows you to predict trends and able to manage your business better. Autonomous vehicles, which we will be focusing on today, are essentially enabling flexibility and enabling connectivity in a way that was not thought before. It improves pick and place automation. It allows last mile delivery. It allows transportation. So targeting material movement, targeting picking and fulfillment, targeting flow, all of these things can now be solved with AGVs and AMRs. Parallelly, if you have a high number of product variants, you have a high number of SKUs in your factory or your warehouses, your distribution center, it is very difficult for proper identification and tracking of so many SKUs. AGVs simplify that by giving a flexible way to connect your legacy automation. If you have two conveyors, for example, and you have a fixed conveyor in between, it's very difficult to track it by its own. You have to implement dimensioning systems, tracking systems, whereas an AGV can be self-sufficient and connect those two legacy systems together. Looking at the others, I will touch them upon them briefly. Last mile delivery similarly can do on-demand logistics. It can fulfill the gap between your goods outfeed and your actual freight and shipping. Things like robots for last mile delivery across neighborhoods. This is becoming more and more trending being used by the likes of Amazon, DHL, and a variety of other logistics companies. Robotics also is a game changer. So, so far we have begun using vision for picking, for quality inspection, for identification. As we move forward and we unlock vision, able to understand light and able to understand images better with the help of AI and machine learning, we are using, we are moving on to an age where the operator no longer has to think, no longer has to waste time in identification. The robotic system, the machine system, does it for him. AR and variables are similar. Augmented reality enables a safer environment, better training, and live updates, which are otherwise just not possible. Pick by vision is another thing. Drones. Drones are another alternative. They are a new age technology, which are taking time to catch on regulations, and a lot of other bottlenecks withstanding. But when used properly, they can be used for last mile delivery and inventory management, even in a factory. Imagine a drone moving around your factory from a bird's eye view, scanning and being able to classify different systems, different objects in real time. This is previously unthought of, and the data you can generate and analyze from that in tandem with other systems is highly beneficial. 
So now that we understood what industry 4.0 can be used for towards logistics as well, the systems to actually put that in place are, do require a significant technology shift. So if you look at the conventional pyramid in an industry 3.0, you start off with your field devices, your input output devices, which can link up to your different systems, provide connectivity. Moving on, you have a controller or a PLC, which links up to these IOs and actually creates the control strategies, the logic to use the IOs and give actions and create feedback loops. Your MES and SCADA is actually controlling the individual controllers. So this layer-based system has worked quite well. The final step in this layer is an ERP system, an enterprise resource planning. This involves pretty much all your aspects of control, right from your freight management, your goods in to goods out. The entire process is handled by this with different levels of intelligence. Now, as we move to industry, industry 4.0, the stress is also on virtualization. How can you distribute your field and IOs and make them more remote, connect them with each other? Therefore, a distributed control unit merges with a PLC and IO module. A lot of you must be familiar with remote IOs, with distributed control units. Essentially, all of this means that you do not need these vast centralized IO systems, huge control cabinets with PLCs, whereas you have intelligent devices, self-sufficient with connectivity. Data is also then if be able to be managed better. It no longer requires you to keep a local server at your factory, whereas it can all be uploaded to the cloud. The cloud then generates all of your computation, your insights. If you look at the five levels, there are various ways to do it. Intelligent sensors, 5G connectivity is another game changer that promises to change industries like oil and gas, chemicals, analytics, something which was not thought of before. But now an intelligent algorithm can actually predict and help you solve your business, make it more efficient, whatever your operations may be, in a very timely fashion. So if, if we speak about automation and why should you move towards flexible automation? As I've been telling you, Industry 4.0 and the entire principle moving forward is all about flexibility. How can you manage data? How can you scale and yet be flexible to deal with the ever-changing requirements of your products, of the market? Therefore, till the early 2000s, we used to split it into three systems, programmable, flexible, and fixed automation. If you look at the left-hand graph, if your product work volume is high, fixed automation makes sense because while it is inflexible, it can be designed for a specific purpose and to deal with high volume and high throughput. You can customize the system very well. For example, a conveyor and a sorter today can lead and work together to generate very high throughput. You can get 20,000 parcels per hour. You can get even more. So the idea of fixed automation is not to reinvent the wheel. It is purely to generate maximum efficiency with low unit cost. This is also because flexible automation and programmable automation was very expensive back in the early 2000s. Now, as you move with your product variety, that is you have high number of SKUs, it is important then to have programmable automation because you need identification. You need classification which is not possible with fixed automation. Therefore, something in the middle is flexible automation, which essentially combines both. Programmable automation was, is also a very significant and huge part of how operations are done today. It makes sense where your production rates are in a batch-based production. 
yet you have flexible SKUs. You have assembly that has to work with a, a lot of different products. There is an interesting concept here which is coming around called cellular assembly, which is batch production happens in cells where programmable automation also makes sense. But flexible automation had not caught up by this time. So the idea now has changed. We have AGVs, we have AMRs, we have IoT devices to connect all our automation. Therefore, your scalability has gone up. Your efficiency has gone up. Your product variance and mix that you could accommodate has gone up. Whereas the skilled labor you require has significantly gone down. Now you must be thinking, fine, this is all good, but the cost has still not been taken down in your opinion. Well, I can tell you it has. The advantage of flexible automation is that it is scalable. It can be implemented in phases. We at Nido especially focus on how we can scale your automation with low capex and how we can implement it straight away with minimal changes to your factory or to your current operations. The idea is to improve your uh, operations. If it is a greenfield project, for sure, from the start, we can implement the best possible solution, achieving the balance of cost and functionality. On the right hand side, you will just see a small graphic which speaks about how fixed infrastructure, AGVs are giving way to something called autonomous mobile robots. As I move on, you will understand more what AGVs and AMRs are. So just, just to capture it from a business sense, uh, why should you invest in this strategically? If you look at the left hand schematic, this is a study by an independent organization called Logistics IQ. They did this study to predict what the trend would be like moving on to 2025. MRO, which is your maintenance and repair, obviously is a big service chunk. It will remain to be. EGVs and AMRs are scaled to grow at a growth rate of almost 55%, which is unheard of for manufacturing systems. Picking storage systems will, of course, remain a huge part of your operations, but they will combine with AGVs and AMRs to build a scalable ecosystem, a connected ecosystem. WMS, WES systems are, of course, the heart of your control. But as AI and machine learning comes on, even these will become more and more intelligent and predictive. On the right hand side, you see your palletizing operations, your sortation systems, conveyors, overhead systems. While legacy automation will not be phased out, it will remain to be implemented, but it will slowly phase out or be improved for more intelligent and more connected systems. So it's important to note that while in India, we may not think that we have a labor shortage, yet for skilled labor, we do. Industrial machines today are mostly manually operated with the likes of forklifts, MHEs, your material handling equipment. Six is to one is the rate at which supply chain jobs outpace talent by a study done by DHL, which is pretty significant. Therefore, it makes even more sense that you invest in automation. And the idea of globalization, India is not far away. So we do need to think of operations in a global sense and link up with the counterparts across China, across Europe, across the US. So all in all, what it means is you get a flexible process flow. You get a very scalable and low capex system Essentially, a ROI of 1.5 to 3 years. I'll welcome all of you to get in touch with me after this presentation. We can look at the detailed ROI of each of your solutions and we can help you figure out how we can take your factories and your operations to a much greater level. Data and insights 
is also something which is significantly improved. Before this, it was not possible to have real-time data. It was not possible to analyze your data at a much higher frequency. You could analyze it, say, once in a month, once in a week. You would have to pull out huge chunks of data from your SCADA or MES system. You would have to implement a data classification system, work with big data technologies. Today, all of this can be automated. WMS systems and WCS systems are linking with AGVs, with AMRs to create a truly connected ecosystem. Also, I will touch upon this later, but we are all living in a very unpredictable age. COVID has shaken up the world. But how can you be safe? How can you supplement labor? Again, automation is the answer, especially if you are working with high value operations such as aerospace and automotive. Automation is critical for you, whether it be AGVs, AMRs, or even NIDO's very own conveyors and sorters, which are intelligent and connected. The other thing is space. Now, when you are looking at logistics, space is very, very important. Looking at the past, the amount of space used for material handling was 25%. The amount of space used for operations was more. As demand and population has gone up, the market has changed. In the present, you can say it is almost at a 50% balance. Yet, 75% of an item's production cost is related to material handling. 55% of a space is used for material handling. Therefore, if you want to increase your material handling, say you want to change the space required, you want it to be flexible. You want to have a cellular area which can be used both for storage and for production and for sorting. You require a flexible solution. AGVs and AMRs are a critical component of this. Without that flexible material movement and handling, you cannot achieve the 75% to 25% ratio, which is now required in the future. As the population and demand surges beyond an unprecedented level. Now I've covered manufacturing. I've covered the areas or the aspects of space. Now, if you, you still may be wondering, okay, AGV, should I implement them in my warehousing? I have cheap labor. The picking operations are essentially the biggest part of the warehousing. The fulfillment can be done manually. Why should I invest in AGVs? Again, AGVs are optimizing your operations. The cost is very, very less compared to the significant increase in return you are getting. The increase in throughput, the increase in efficiency. Your quality levels significantly go up. Parallelly, your fulfillment is optimized. You are again capturing data about picking and putting operations in a way that was never done before. An AGV is able to act as a goods to person solution. Therefore, it can bring particular SKUs which are tracked loaded onto an AGV by another automated system, by an industrial robot, which can then be transported to a person, as you can see in the picture, who can then pick or put them on a rack. Another huge aspect, like I said, is the lack of labor ability, especially globally. Again, automation with AGVs is more critical with warehousing, where you cannot have fixed automation due to the lack of space and flexibility required. Safety is another critical aspect where AGVs and AMRs help you. So recently a study was done in the US. 11% of forklifts are involved in an accident which leads to a serious injury. Boxes and totes often fall. AGVs again disallow all of this because the human being is no longer at risk. Automated pick and place operations can also be done by cobots. 
cobots are AGVs which run with human intervention. They can work in a human only area. Therefore, NIDO especially prides itself on developing systems which work with all human beings, which work, which do not require a non-human area. So now uh, without going into too much depth, you have understood why it makes sense to invest in flexible automation. What exactly are AGVs and AMRs? So AGVs are fixed path followers. They are pre-programmed. They can replace material movement. They can replace assembly lines or they can even work as transfer systems between say two conveyors or previously implemented automation systems. The advantage here is that the robot and the application are separate. They can be customized pretty much to an infinite amount. The only limitations are the infrastructure, the initial cost, the technology level. AGVs today work on a lot of different navigations. Once they have to go from point A to point B, they follow a fixed reference on the ground or a particular reference point on the wall. This is why AGVs require a fixed path. Once you implement the path, such as a magnetic tape, which I will talk about in detail as we move on, or a color coded path, it will follow that path until you actually change the physical tape or you change the physical path itself. Autonomous mobile robots, on the other hand, are flexible. They are able to replan. They tape on the floor. They use natural navigation, laser triangulation, inertial navigation. Now, they, these terms all might sound very complex. Essentially, what they are doing is enable the robot to localize itself. That is to figure out where it is, plan its path, and correspondingly, with the decided mission, able to stop at a particular place, pick up an object, or drop an object, or link up with your automation system to make sure that it can transfer material, it can pick and place material as required. So AGVs, like I have touched upon a bit before, their use cases are vast. There is actually no limit to how markets can be targeted. It is used in automotive, in manufacturing, in pharma, distribution, and even hospitals. So you might have heard of a few scenarios where even for COVID, AGVs are able to transport material in a non-contact way in hospitals. The applications are all based on the type of material or it's in, in which form you are able to transport them. Raw material can be rolls. It can be for the paper handling industry. If you have paper rolls for a newspaper publication, I would invite you and you are using manual systems. I would invite you to get in touch with me. We will be able to help you figure out how we can automate that using an AGV. Your paper roll feeding system may be automated, but the linkages, the transport is very, very difficult with these huge heavy rolls. Pallets and totes, today are transported by a forklift. Moving on, we will see why a forklift does not make sense. Why an AGV makes sense. Your boxes and bins, again, can be transported by an AGV. Earlier, you might have to use a trolley, you might have to use a cart. Therefore, this makes it significantly easier. Work in process. So you may think of having a moving assembly line based on a conveyor based on an overhead line, but AGVs can solve that for you as well. It can work in a in-process manner, whether it is a kitting line, whether it is an engine assembly line. Again, 
I would invite you to get in touch with us. We'll be able to infinitely solve your solution in a much more flexible way. NEGV will, can have a fixture mounted on top of it to make sure the engine assembly goes smoothly and it can be flexible based on your seasonal surges in demand and requirement. The final assembly line is again another huge application of how AGVs can be used. Between your body in white assembly lines and your paint shops, AGVs can transport your finished body. They can finish your body in white. Your welding, spot welding operations can be done while an AGV transports the very chassis and the material itself. So these are some of the cases in a wider perspective. Now for material movement itself, if you look at a regular factory or a manufacturing operation, on the left hand side, you see nine particular movement areas. These are your material movement areas where AGVs can transport material without the need for investing in fixed solutions such as overhead conveyors, such as flexible conveyors, such as fixed roller and chain conveyors, sorters, etc. The idea here is to make sure that your system is scalable. Your operations can change. Your current factory may be limited to a certain throughput. Implementing AGVs will scale it to 120% throughput in most cases. This is a game changer for what, whichever business you may have without investing in another greenfield facility. Therefore, stores to goods, stores to assembly, inspection, packing, staging, palletizing to warehouse, warehouse to outbound. As you can see on the right hand side, they can work with industrial robots, palletizing robots to make sure material is transported efficiently. They link up with conveyors and sorters, as we will see later. In process, like I was talking about, you can use it for kitting and fulfillment. In automotive operations, especially for a lot of you, kitting and fulfillment will be critical. A, a manual operator has to bring a trolley loaded with, for example, gears, forging components coming from your forging line. An AGV can automatically go hook up to the trolley, bring it to the right station in both a semi-automated or an automated manner. The calls and dispatch can be based on a manual or automated decision point. Depending on which MES system you have, Nido again has a wide variety of software solutions we can implement for you to link up on whichever level you require. Assembly work in process, like I was talking about, engine assembly lines for body in white assembly lines. On the right hand side, you see, for example, a tractor be, being assembled on the top of an EGV. This requires, this creates a just in time, a first in first out production model capable, which previously may not have been using a conveyor or a fixed automation. Goods out and final line is your final application where again, the same AGV can be used for material movement and can be used for two applications at the same time. The idea is the attachment is flexible. We at Nido have a great expertise in mechanical design and the latest manufacturing technologies so that we can create a bespoke fixture or holding attachment as you require. Again, for warehousing, you have QR code based lifting AGVs. As I was speaking, the goods to person solution, which I had described earlier, would require an AGV to go and lift 
or get the object or SKUs in some form to the person. Now, how can you do that? These AGVs work on a principle of QR codes. That is, QR codes you might all be familiar with. You all scan it with Google Pay. You all scan it with PTM. These QR codes can be embedded on the floor. The AGV works in a grid-based form, goes under a rack, lifts it, and the identification and dispatching can be done by a WMS system, which again, we will integrate for you perfectly and can lift the rack, take it to the right operator at the right time. This allows an unprecedented efficiency, which was just not possible before. On the right hand side, you see a system which can also create a very flexible sorting solution. Today, you have very complex designs of comp cross belt sorters, of induction chutes and sorters working together with feeds and out feeds to create a very challenging system in terms of tracking. If a one particular chain of the system goes down, often it leads to a significant halt. Again, robot-based sorting using QR grids would enable this to be significantly solved. Just to go through this very briefly, I would invite you, of course, all of you later, whoever wants to know more about the system in detail and what we can do for you to get in touch with me personally after this. The system here, as you can see on the platform, uses an army of robots, which using a system of tilt rays or other attachments, pushes parcels into essentially holes in the platform, which has its own induction chutes linked up at the bottom. This therefore means that you can achieve a high throughput in excess of 18,000 parcels per hour. The investment is significantly less if you consider the gains in flexibility in your operations and your tracking. So now moving on, finishing the warehousing and logistics, why really should you invest in AGVs and not forklifts, even for material movement? Firstly, an AGV works 24 seven, does not require a human operator. You spend less money on forklift drivers. In India, you may be able to get a forklift labor at a relatively cheap rate. But as the economy grows, as we require more skilled operations, you do have to invest in particular safety accreditations for safety approvals, training for your operator. An AGV does not require all of this. It works as required, where required, and it works 24 seven without tiredness. An AGV also costs less than forklifts. We will make sure how do we implement the best possible systems for you to achieve the lowest capex and the best ROI. An AGV is intelligent, a forklift is not. AGV is flexible. Even with a fixed path, we can branch those paths. We can change the paths as required. The safety is critically enhanced. It is almost going from a zero to 100 level. Like I described, forklift accidents are plenty. An AGV will not have accidents because we have sophisticated safety sensors and systems on board. It avoids collections. It is space efficient. It is quiet and it is scalable. Also, an AGV is modular. So you can change the cart on top to change whatever application you may desire. So if we look at a particular use case now, how can an AGV transport a trolley for you? There are two ways of doing this, which would be recommend. One is trolley tugging, one is trolley tunneling. In this, an existing trolley can have a hook it can be modified with a particular attachment where the AGV can go in an automated or manual fashion and link up with the trolley. This can be called by the operator manually or be dispatched by the MES or WCS system. We can have different attachments customized for your requirement, which can use a variety of sensing and actuation mechanisms. 
This can drop the loaded trolley at a defined drop point, and then it can resume dispatch with an empty trolley or a work in process trolley. Therefore, as you can see, the application can be customized indefinitely. You can link up four or five trolleys together, which is just not possible with the manual operation. Conveyor transfer, a most common application where you are confined by the rigidity of a conveyor. If you look at the top, the flow has to have a middle sorting conveyor and then feeding it to particular lines, which has to be freezed and pre-programmed. And also on the right hand side, you can see that scenario is just not possible where the operator has to say, do a picking or a transfer operation, but he cannot be in between your fixed conveyor lines. And AGV here again is highly flexible. It can replan its operations based on the WMS, based on a traffic management system. It can transfer objects from a conveyor easily and efficiently. On the right hand side, you see one of our systems which can transfer your regular Euro pallet. Lifting. Again, you may require to lift your rack, as I showed in the warehousing system before, or you may even require a pallet. Today, you may have a BOPT or a forklift. We can replace that with a simple stand and a solution for fixed palletizing or getting a pallet and lifting it and taking to another predefined stop or your racking area, NEGV will be able to do wonders, which you may not be able to do with a manual operation. Your efficiency and throughput will normally increase by a whopping 70 to 80%. So now moving on to the actual hardware and software, what makes an AGV? Uh, like I have described some of these applications to finish that, again, I would like to say all these applications are highly customizable. So I have touched upon them at a high level. Whatever your solution, your process flow requires, please do get in touch with us. We will be able to guide you and customize it for you far, far better. AGV system has a number of components that come together to make it. The AGV itself is created using a mechanical system and a drive, a navigation sensor, an algorithm, a safety system and sensors, control and feedback mechanisms, batteries and charging, dispatching and scheduling. If all of this sounds complex right now, worry not. Once you do get in touch with us, we will explain it to you far better and you will be able to understand and not even worry about these systems because the solution will work all on its own as a whole. If you look at the customized attachment, like I was saying, that is bespoke to your solution. We do require certain infrastructure changes for AGV where we need to lay magnetic tape or we need to lay a color tape or QR code markers or RFID tags. Fleet management, WMS integration, analytics, is all powered by a proprietary software, NEDOWORKS. It has a number of modules which come together to make sure that your control system can work intelligently and independently without you requiring to intervene. So just touching upon the systems of the AGV in a bit more detail. Safety is of course very critical. So as you can see in the schematic depicted there, we create our AGVs with a number of safety zones. You have a warning zone, you have a caution zone, and you have a stop zone. Therefore, the AGV is able to sense the human or obstacle well in advance and able to slow down, stop, even create an alarm using a buzzer and warn the operator to move away. We use sophisticated laser scanners for this, which 
have a range of up to 30 meters and can have a hardware safety stop. For those of you familiar a bit with AGV systems will be aware of safety cert classes and certifications. We can go up to SIL3, which essentially means that you will have a contingency layer upon a contingency layer on your safety. Say your safety systems fails, your scanners fail, we have contact safety edges on our system, which allows a hard stop on contact with any obstacle immediately using flexible bumpers. This All this together means that an AGV or an AMR is highly safe. Just to touch upon something else, AMRs also have the capability that to dynamically avoid obstacles, which we are currently developing, but that will be in production very soon. Navigation and controls are another area which are critical to an AGV. For this, we have path following sensors mounted on the AGV. The picture there is of a magnetic tape sensor. You can have a tape or also you can have magnetic pointers where your system does not require a continuous tape. You can embed pointers at a specific distance of say every one or two meters. This requires significantly less changes, less grouting on the floor and also less cost. Magnetic tape is a very common application you will see of AGVs. As we will move on to the next slides, I will also show you how it can move, how they can navigate. LIDARs and depth cameras are used for natural navigation. A LIDAR is essentially a light detection and ranging solution. That what it can do is that it can essentially calculate the referencing and the navigation in real time without any infrastructure. Cameras and QR codes are again, like I told you, a huge part of navigation. Industrial computers, IMUs, and your controllers and PLCs together form the localization and the control brain. Your PLC is a very flexible solution as it was explained by my colleague Devendra in a previous session, a PLC is easy to program and flexible based on ladder logic or a number of other methodologies. You can utilize this to implement it in your solution easily. The drive battery and structure uses standard motors, drives with feedback. We use encoders to get odometry, which I will touch upon later which is a way to calculate how far your robot has gone. We also focus particularly at NIDO to make sure our mechanical structure and panels are able to withstand industrial abuse, are able to withstand the life of your operations and have a long and error-free service life. Service is a huge aspect we focus on we make sure that breakdown is minimized. Even in the cases of a breakdown, it is easy to access, diagnose, and repair. Battery systems, again, are something which we customize based on your requirement. We can go with lead acid batteries all the way to lithium ion or LIFPO4 batteries, but we ensure that you have an eight hour minimum backup to make sure that one shift goes in an uninterrupted without a charging required. We have our customized charging solutions as well with docks with on the path charging available, which makes sure depending on your requirement, an AGV can run 24 seven or during times of less utilization, it can go on its own and charge itself. The attachments, as I touched upon earlier, can be of various kinds. It can be a scissor lifter, a conveyor, a towing. We can even integrate a cart or a rack with PTL or uh, picking by light possible. Voice operations are also something which are being looked at. 
So all of this is fine. Now to close all the navigation bit, I can tell you how the AGV itself is moving. How does it reference where it is? How does it know where to go? So there are a number of ways of doing it. There are nine ways essentially you can navigate an AGV starting from an induction guidance, which is you embedding a, essentially a line, a, a metal line in the floor carrying a charge using which you induce an electromagnetic field in your AGV and you follow the path predefined by the charged cable laid in the ground. Magnetic tape is very similar though it works on magnetization instead of electric fields. Magnetic spot, which I showed you, requires you to embed particular spots instead of a tape throughout the layer. QR code used in warehousing is also, again, very useful in the fact that it is easy to implement and simple. Laser triangulation is something which uses reflectors mounted on the walls. This makes sure that the AGV calculates its position by looking at say four positions around the factory and figuring out the center of those four positions. If all of you remember basic geometry, if you draw two diagonals in a square and you figure out the center, you are triangulating your position. This is essentially what we do with laser triangulation in very, very simple terms. Natural navigation on the far right hand side, as you can see, is the most advanced of all of these, requires no changes and can be implemented in a day or less. You can simply unpack the robot, map the facility, and you can get going after you have programmed your mission or operations. So natural navigation and autonomous mobile robots, how does it actually work? On the left hand side, you see something graph which show which is essentially showing your two wheels in an AGV. So zero to 50 to 100, what does that mean? So all of you must be familiar with the simple formula two pi r. So when a wheel moves a certain amount, you can calculate the distance it has moved. This is what we use to start with the navigation. We correct this using a LIDAR, which accurately maps the environment around it up to 200,000 times a second. What this means is that you can create an accurate scan or a map of the area around you. Then reference those areas to figure out where you are. The schematic on the right actually shows you how a laser scan looks like. This is done using a set of techniques most commonly known as ROS. Mapping localization is comes together, therefore, to create your path planning and navigation. So we have looked at what an AGV operates on, what the hardware at a local AGV level uses. Now, how do we control multiple AGVs together? How do we analyze the data coming out of it? How do we manage the, the entire fleet in an automated way? As you can see, we have our WMS, we have our need of works traffic management solution, which then communicates over our PLCs, our HMIs and mission planners. What this means is that your entire automation solution can talk to each other and can reference based on handshakes or particular matching points as and where required. Our fleet management is capable of multiple scheduling and dispatch modes based on your production model. It can replan based on the utilization, the uptime. For example, today, you might not be having to produce a lot of SKUs while the COVID scenario has shut down a lot of your operations. Therefore, your AGV can replan, it can reschedule, it can work on 20% efficiency, it can work on 30%, it 
whereas the power and uh, other consumptions from an economic and operations point are significantly going down. Your AGV can also go to charge when it is not being utilized. Therefore, you may not need to have an in-process charging solution. Your buffer and work in process can be calculated automatically with your WMS system. Therefore, as you can see, a fleet management solution implemented by us makes sure that all your AGVs work together. Our analytics, again, what it does, crucially, it allows you to predict maintenance. It gives you warnings and errors based on a AMC frequency. Your AMC is no longer defined by a rigid plan or a frequency. Maintenance can be predictive based on intelligent sensors mounted on our AGVs, our AMRs. Faults and alarms can be remotely delivered to you. You can be somewhere out of your factory and yet alarms and faults can come to you, the plant head or the production manager for you to efficiently manage and get an overview of your operations. The paths and locations of your 10 AGVs, for example, can be continuously monitored. Uptime, throughput, utilization, all your critical parameters can be used for the latest in 5S or Kanban technologies so that your manufacturing and production systems link up seamlessly. Cloud-based or IoT solutions make sure that all of this data is not locally stored. There is a redundancy in terms of how you can manage it. Remote diagnostics again mean that our team at Nido is able to get alerts. It is able to get warnings when a particular system may be failing. Say your system breaks down. We can remotely take over, implement over the air updates, change your logic, as and where required. Again, this is all based on the scope of solution and technology you require, and we work on customizing it together for you. So, to all in all, we have touched upon all of it, but you might be thinking, okay, I have an existing factory. I don't want to spend much on changing it. How are we going to actually implement it? Well, these are some of the areas where you can think about what you need to consider. What I can tell you in a nutshell is that AGVs and AMRs can be implemented with minimal change. And specifically, if you are planning a greenfield project, I would invite you to get in touch with us immediately. We are able to create your automation solution with the next five, 10 years, or even more in mind as you require. To conclude, our automation ecosystem is vast. What Nido prides in itself is integrating all our solutions well together. Today we have touched on AGVs, AMRs, pick and put to light systems, our Again, a forte of ours, conveyor sortation, dimensioning and weighing integrates together very well with all our AGVs and AMRs. On the right hand side, you see the images of a few of our products. Now to leave on a good note, uh, I hope, as I said, COVID, you are all dealing with it well, but even from a business standpoint, as an operation, automation is more important than ever Keep your labor safe, supplement them with automation. Your seasonal surges, stock, inventory, buffers can be managed very well with automation in a scalable and modular way. Your high flexibility and just-in-time production, which is the need of the hour, can again be taken care of. Your uptime and utilization, both in COVID and non-COVID times, will obviously go up. Your skilled labor requirement goes down. So I hope you all found this informative. Uh, I would invite all of you to get in touch with me and our team immediately. And I look forward to working on the very best in automation solutions specifically designed and customized for you.
Thank you very much.